Um, thanks for jumping on today. Uh, you know, obviously the goal of this uh, this call every Tuesday is to um, is to really help uh, share information, knowledge, uh, positive things that are happening in the world, and uh, uh, things I can do to help you guys grow and uh, and really accomplish your goals. Um, you know, as a as a uh, as a leader, um, you know, again, I, I decided to start this YouTube channel a couple months ago, uh, clear channel, K L E A R channel on YouTube, please subscribe. Um, and a little, not because I want you to subscribe, but simply because I'm going to put content up to help, uh, help you grow and help you get better. And I'll tell you 18, 20 years of being an entrepreneur, I've had a lot of crazy stuff go on. Uh, some things I'm going to talk about today, and, and today I'm going to talk about mindset uh, and the outward mindset and, and what that means and how it can help you have a good life. Um, I know some of you guys are driving, some of you guys are in a place to take notes. Whatever you feel you can do or want to do to help you grow, um, obviously it's up to you. So, uh, so just to give you a little context and background uh, <clears throat> about this inward outward mindset. I truly believe that we are, 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 we're a product of our choices and we're not a product of our environment. Uh, although our environment will, will shape us. It will ingrain certain things in our mind and our habits and our daily uh, decisions. Um, and so I just want to share with you a little bit about the things that have impacted me as a child and kind of helped me think the way that, that I think now. So just to tell you a bit about my, my background, my parents uh, were engineers and architects. Uh, my mom was born in Bogota, Colombia, uh, in South America. She came to the U.S. at the age of 18 uh, for the, you know, for the somewhat of the American dream to be in the U.S., to make a change. Um, and, uh, and I'll tell you, um, you know, there is uh, some challenges going on in the family and her side of things. Um, you know, my, my mom's mom, unfortunately, had passed away at a young age. And so she was the oldest of six sisters. And, uh, and she needed to make a change. Um, then on my dad's side, my dad was the American. He was the gringo, my mom used to call him. Uh, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed American boy, pale-skinned. Uh, when I would stand next to him as a child, because I'm so dark, I'm so, I have a dark complexion and Hispanic type of look. Uh, people would be like, so who's your dad? I'm like, he's right here. <laughs> and they're like, oh, hi, Mr. Lear. You know, because uh, they, they couldn't tell because he was so blonde hair, blue eye, well, gray when he was older. Um, uh, he was a Jersey boy, uh, New Jersey, went to Rutgers. Uh, but out of college, after, you know, studying engineering, he started a job in New York City at a place called Parsons Brinkerhof, uh, a pretty large engineering firm. My mom, being an architect by trade, coming to the U.S. after a few years of schooling and doing odd and end job in her early 20s, uh, landed a position as an architect at the same Parsons Brinkerhof in New York City. Then they met, uh, thankfully. Um, and I'll tell you, uh, I think um, my upbringing shaped me in a lot of ways. Uh, gave me a lot of perspective, um, and I think the reason I've made my choices uh, today is, is based on some of those. So, so when I think of work, in my mom's point of view, for many, many years, especially in my high school years, my mom used to complain all the time about discrimination in the workplace. She felt like she wasn't getting jobs. She felt like she wasn't getting opportunities. She felt like because she didn't speak the language well, because she was Hispanic, because lots of things. And I would feel her pain a lot through high school, like almost daily at the dinner table. I would have her, you know, I would be like listening to her and my dad conversate about work. And it really, really hurt me deep to see her go through that pain, right or wrong. I wasn't there, I wasn't judging, but I just know she felt a lot of pain. And then on my dad's side of things, I, uh, I saw him, um, Career-wise, you know, business uh, flourish. He was a vice president of this engineering firm over the years. Um, he was very detailed. Um, he was very calm. My mom was the fireball, was one 
I like at a party, she'd be the life of the party. My dad would be like asleep in the corner with his, with his book kind of thing, like totally opposites. And they talk about opposites attract. Perfect example. When you meet my, if you ever had a chance to meet my mom and dad, my dad taught me a, a simple thing. He taught me measure twice, cut once. So he was very slow to decide, very slow to make decisions, but he was very intentional and very pointed at what he did. And so, you know, and I'll tell you, and I have an older brother, Jeff, he's five years older than I am. Uh, he was a in pretty incredible athlete. For some of you guys that don't know, he actually played soccer at Penn State also. He was a, a, an All-American there. And because he took the risk to go to college, he had no scholarship to start, but earned a scholarship his sophomore year and ended up having a fantastic college career. Uh, because of his choices and his risks he took, I actually uh, got connected to some soccer camps, and that's how I fell into getting a scholarship to play in college. Um, and so, and I'll tell you, my brother at state titles, homecoming, you know, king, he's scholarship, um, obviously a big time athlete. And so, and I'm the younger brother, right? And so, going through all those experiences through high school and my brother, and my see my parents talk about the workplace. Um, the reason I love the business that I do, and I know this, this is going to be on YouTube and I know it's for anyone that wants to grow and learn. And a lot of you, all we work together, but the reason I love our business so much is it doesn't discriminate the people who perform and it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, where you went to school, the numbers in sales determine the opportunity. So when I fell into this at 22 years old, the reality was that the opportunity has no prejudice. So the opportunity is going to be for people who want it and are willing to perform at it. And so for me, growing up in this world of mom being so negative about things and dad being, you know, the way he was, it was like a match made in heaven for me. And I had an aha moment about this performance-based business when I was less than 30 days into the organization, when I had two people pass me to getting promoted to more of a leadership phase. And I was incredibly humbled by that. I was actually quite pissed off about it, but I was the one in the corner going, you mother, you know, I was happy, but not happy, but I was pissed at myself kind of thing. And, um, and so, but that really hit home with me because it really make me, made me realize that either you're going to do it or someone else will. And so for me, thinking about the growth and what was possible and what I wanted, I wanted to have like a job, um, because I didn't have one before this, like I had to make this work. My back was against the wall. So I was telling some of our staff that just started in our office recently, I drove an hour and 10 minutes to the office one way. I lived in 8A off the turnpike in New Jersey. The office was in Cherry Hill, an hour one way. And then I would go out and do business to business sales. And I drove another hour to the territory. And then after my day, I drive an hour back to the office and an hour home. So I was in the car four hours a day when I was entry level in sales. And I did it because I love the people I worked with. I love the opportunity of performance-based advancement. And when I got my first $1,000 paycheck, my, and, you know, right about five, six weeks later, I was like, game on. If I, got, if I can work and if I can make 1000 I can make 2000 If I can make 1000 a day, I can make 2000 a day. Like, I was so motivated to not be broke and not live paycheck to paycheck. And so I'll tell you, then when I got into leadership, I, again, I struggled. I learned about the business and mentoring and coaching and learning the day-to-day -day leadership responsibilities. I struggled at it. And uh, my aha moment, again, about no seniority is there is someone else in the business that was growing faster than me. This girl that was a swimmer from UNC had all the, you know, uh, had people training and had all this responsibility. Um, and so that early in my career is when I realized, and again, my dad said to me when I started in this industry, he said, remember that successful people leave clues. 
a lot of times they're left in books and a lot of time they're left in conversations. You have to be willing to go have the conversation. So find out the best person at whatever you want to learn and meet with them, bring them a coffee, sit with them, talk to them for 15, 30 minutes, learn from them and be a humble student. And I've taken in my career in 20 years, I can tell you one of my biggest um, assets to the reason I've grown and done what I've done is because of my student mentality. I'm a student of those that are better than me and that are qualified to give me advice. So give an example. If you want a long-term career, you shouldn't take advice from people that quit jobs in the first three to six months. It makes no sense. If you want to have a fantastic marriage and a fantastic relationship, you shouldn't take advice from people that unfortunately have fallen into situations where they can't stick together with their significant others. Like it just is what it is. You learn from people that are qualified to give you advice. And so for me, that's what I chose to do. So when it comes to, um, careers in business and the reason why i want to talk about inward and outward mindset is i'll say this there's two things i want to share with you guys number one leadership and winning at the game of life is very humbling very humbling it's not for the faint of heart that's why the last time i checked everyone wants to be successful but not everyone is a lot of people want freedom of time a lot of people want freedom of choices, freedom of travel. They want financial strength. They want freedom of finances. But unfortunately, majority of America lives paycheck to paycheck. At the age of 62, people are more broke than they are at 18, statistically speaking. But if you want to be great and you want to accomplish your goals, you want to live a life that's very fulfilling, you're going to get knocked down. And you're going to be humbled. So that's point number one. Number two is it takes as long as it takes. And as long as you don't quit on yourself and your own development in the business that I do, it's very forgiving. Most of you guys don't know me when I was 24 years old. And thank goodness, I was not a great example. I, w I told some stories last night to our staff that was in our little team night. Like there's this bar in Atlanta that knows me so well that they knew me six or seven years later. Cause the guy, I swear he went from making six figures to making 30 grand a year. Cause I stopped going there. Like I, it was, I, I just had too much fun and spent too much money at that bar. And I swear, I, I mean, everyone loved me. Of course I bought them drinks every Friday night. Right. So, but remember it's very, life is forgiving people, your closest people that love you will forgive you and allow you to grow through things. And you should be around people that are like that. You shouldn't be around people that are judging you. you shouldn't be around people that are trying to bring you down because you want to accomplish your dreams. Get around people that are going to build you up. So with all that being said, in 2019 in August, I had a chance to go to Atlanta and work with my buddy, Adam. Uh, it's when we started launching this retail idea that I'm in. And uh, I flew in a day early and I took a leadership seminar um, about and the, the seminar is called leadership and self-deception. Uh, someone on his staff, uh, Jenna, a good friend of mine is, uh, was, was certified. She's, I mean, the certification is like a $10,000 certification. Uh, and then she turned around and taught a lot of us uh, about this inward and outward mindset. And so I'll tell you, this stuff was an absolute game changer for me. And, and it was exactly what I needed. And it's interesting in the world that people show up and information shows up when you're ready for it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I think the saying is the, the teacher will appear when the student is ready, uh, not the other way around. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, so what is the inward mindset? So the inward mindset, so you can know what that is to know what the outward mindset is. The inward mindset in theory is things inside. So people that have an inward mindset, they say things like they focus on my results, my world, selfishly. What others do 
doesn't matter. So when they think of other people, they think of how those people um, can be used as a vehicle to hit their goals. And when obstacles come up, they blame other people. It's never their fault. It's always someone else's. And then if things are, you know, challenging or obstacles, they try to ignore them, try to avoid them. They're not looking to hit things head on. Right? But because they're so inwardly thinking, the influence is, oh, they're the problem. I'm good. Right? So people that are inwardly thinkers try to manipulate people. They try to control people. They blame others. They punish others. They belittle people. They exclude other people. Right? And I know those are some strong words. Now, I can tell you, although I didn't fall into all of those areas, I've been that person in my life, unfortunately. I've blamed other people for my lack of success. I blamed other people for my lack of growth. I haven't taken responsibility. I used to think about, you know, in our businesses, we grow and we develop others. I used to look at other people for a means to an end. I wouldn't, I wouldn't teach people because it was the right thing to do to help them reach their goal. I do it because if I could help them, then I'm going to reach my goal. Very selfish, very unfortunate, but we all go through that phase. So if you're in that phase, just realize you're there and make the shift to the outward mindset. Now, the outward mindset is when you think outside of yourself. People matter like I matter. It's not my results. It's our results. We are in this together. What we can accomplish as a team, it's not me versus you, it's we're at this. Hey, we're going to raise each other up. We're going to build each other's confidence. We're going to help each other. And so when you're outwardly thinking, you set high expectations for the people around you because they have high expectations for you. And you work together to, again, to raise each other up and, and help each other reach your goals. And you give helpful correction. And the person receiving the correction doesn't take it personal. They say, you know what? Hey, if you have perspective, I, that's an interesting perspective. I should think about that. Hey, can I give you some perspective? Yeah. Sometimes you give direct feedback. And there's a respect among that direct feedback that, hey, I'm coming from a place of love and care about you to help you grow, but I'm going to give you some of this feedback. It's not going to feel very good, but it's to help you be better. And the person that receives it understands that it comes from a place of love, so it builds them up. Not because they're picking on me or belittling me or whatever, because it comes from an outsert, an outward mindset. And although conversations are difficult, they're, they're worthwhile and they help each other. And this is outward mindset people listen. They take the time to listen. They take the time to learn. They involve other people. And they truly show genuine appreciation for people who go out of their way to do the right thing. And so, and I'll tell you what I've learned, and I'm not perfect. I bounce around a little bit because I'm human, back to inward and outward mindset. I'm not saying I'm completely outward, but I can tell you my emotions oftentimes dictate what mindset I have. And I'll tell you um, just a quick story. And again, this was about a year, year and a half ago when I took uh, uh, this training. 
And uh, I didn't realize how um, I didn't realize how how much I needed to grow through this. So the 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 scenario was, you know, back then in the early days of this retail program, uh, I was putting in 10, 12, 15 hour days, a ground floor of a brand new business, uh, ground floor of getting things rocking for the team that's worked with me behind the scenes uh, for Tay and K, you know, they, they saw me. I was in super early. I was working super late. I was putting in my six, seven days a week. Like I was building a business from scratch something that, you know, I'd never done before. And I remember, um, you know, coming home at the end of the day. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I don't enjoy doing, I, but I do, uh, is the dishes. I hate the fucking dishes. Excuse my language. And the reason I don't enjoy it is because I don't want to do it. Doing the dishes. Now, the, the, what I realized, um, and the reason why it hit home so much for me, I remember walking in the door and looking at the dishes and getting, again, inward mindset, getting upset that no one in my house did the dishes. And although my wife is an absolute superstar, works full time, and I was putting in my 12, 15 hours a day at work and building the business. Well, she was doing just the same with two little monkeys that can't get themselves dressed every day and working a full-time job. And what an a-hole I was for coming home and thinking, why didn't you do the dishes? Right? That is so selfish. It was so bad. And again, I had this negative energy. I had frustration. And I'll tell you, um, the reason why it hit home so much was one night after I did the dishes and I was frustrated inside. It wasn't about the world around me. I was frustrated about me, frustrated that I you know, was doing the dishes and whatever. And I was really frustrated that we weren't growing as much and I wasn't getting ahead as much as I wanted to. And uh, my little one, Mason, he says to me as I'm like asking him to do something and I had a pretty strong tone with him. And he's very in tune with his heart, which I love him for that. And he says to me at four years old, he says, dad, why are you being so mean to me? And I was like, what? And I literally started tearing up. And I was like smacked in the face, like, oh my God, this is exactly what the training was talking about. This energy I'm putting into the world, my four-year-old can feel. Get over yourself. And so it really, really, and I remember laying in bed that night and I said to Sarah, I said, I can't believe what Mason just said to me. But frankly, it was the best thing I could hear. And I told her and she said, yeah, well, listen, we know you're stressed. We know you're building a business from scratch. We know you've done well and all these other things we've built the business with, but it's not an easy time. But the more you can start thinking about us and living in the moment, our kids are only going to be this age for a few years. So let's enjoy the ride. And so I'll tell you, I changed my mindset. I'll never forget that night. I remember looking at him with tears in my eyes and I was like, buddy, I'm so sorry. And so I'll tell you, I appreciate my family more than anything. I appreciate Sarah and how, how direct she is with me and how honest she is with me. Um, you know, and, and uh, because I was able to shift this mindset, and again, I'm not, I'm human. So I bounce in it every once in a while, but not really. I don't remember the last time I got frustrated doing the dishes. It's probably been over a year. But literally walking around the house with gratitude with positive energy. I, I do my best to think about the kids, think about her before I think about myself. And interestingly enough, when I think about other people and I focus on helping other people do well because it's the right thing to do, I'm filled up. 
my emotional cup of who I am and my confidence and what I stand for is full and it's overflowing. And so I share that with you guys because I think we all can, can think about in our lives how we show up. And if we can shift our mindset to thinking about other people and what that can do for you and your own emotional strength and your emotional confidence, uh, they call it EQ. It's like your IQ, but your EQ. It's your emotional um, intelligence. So I'll give you some tips if you want to, if this is something you really, uh, this, this hits home with you. Things that you can do to help you, um, you know, move toward being more outwardly thinking. Number one, think of someone who's been waiting for you to do something for them and actually do it. It could be as simple as cleaning the dishes or vacuuming the living room or cleaning the house or a friend that needs a, that, that needs a phone call or a gift this time of year, right? That for something positive. So number one, think of someone who's been waiting for you to do something and actually do it. Number two, uh, be a good listener with an important friend. Talk less and just listen and support them and help them. Don't give them answers. Just help them grow through whatever they're going through. Number three, at work, think about a coworker that you made a situation difficult recently and apologize. Think about a coworker that something difficult, that you made something more difficult than it should have been and simply apologize. And lastly, in the business you're in, think about your leader. Think about someone you respect, someone you appreciate, someone who's gone out of their way to help you and simply ask them if you can relieve some of the pressure they have. Something you can do for them. They do so much for you. Do something for them. Help them with something. You know, and I, I've learned in, in, by going through these experiences and going through these times and, and getting this uh, training, uh, and frankly, the book, if you're interested in reading it, it's called Leadership and Self-Deception. You can get it on, uh, online. You can actually listen to the audio as well. It's a very, very interesting book. Uh, I've listened to it audio-wise twice. And uh, I've read it. Uh, I've read it once. Uh, it's awesome, Taylor. That's that's awesome reading it. Um, but I've learned that when you think of others more often than you think of yourself, and I've learned when I think of others more than I think of myself, uh, again, it fills me up. And it's interesting how people around you respond, and how positive things happen. And oftentimes you actually inspire other people to start doing similar things. And then the whole ripple effect happens where little by little, we do more and more positive things for the, the community around us. And then it just multiplies in this crazy world that we live in. So, so guys, that's what I have for you today. The inward and outward mindset. I'll tell you, um, it's been a game changer for me. You know, the, and I just think about even doing this, uh, this YouTube channel and kind of spending this time on Tuesdays. Um, it's all outward mindset thinking. It's to put good in the world. It's to help. And again, my goal is to change the world one leader at a time, help people reach their dreams and, 
And I had a call earlier with uh, some people in our organization and, you know, they asked me what, what, um, what's a life lesson I've learned because, you know, I'll go through ups and downs. And, and again, for those of you guys that, you know, don't know or whatever, I mean, I lost my parents uh, now seven years ago to cancer in a matter of three months. Uh, my company name uh, is named after my son's birthday. It's the day after that my father passed away. And I know that I went through a lot of things in my career, in my personal life. And uh, I mean, I don't know what hell it looks like, but I was probably pretty close to that, you know, going through those, those challenges. Uh, but the fact that I'm rebuilding myself and I've rebuilt myself for the years and, and building a business and, and doing what we do. And I'm incredibly blessed with an unbelievable family and a beautiful home and a great business and great friends. Uh, I know that I'm here to give you hope, to know that no matter how much you get knocked down, no matter how hard it is, if you're willing to work hard enough for long enough, you're going to be able to reach your dreams, whatever that is. And it could be like I do going to the World Cup. That, those are my dreams. I love going to the World Cup every four years. That's my happy place. So, and if it means buying your mom a house, if it means, you know, moving out of your place, getting your own place, if it means driving a Ferrari, if it means having complete control, you know, my family, it's having a financial impact on other people that can't take care of themselves. If it means starting a charity and, and taking care of an orphanage, if it means, whatever it means, you can have it all. So happy Tuesday, happy holidays, everybody. Um, stay safe. Uh, I mentioned this last night on a little group me message I put to my team. You'll notice uh, in the news uh, that in the last 24 to 48 hours, there's hundreds of thousands of vaccines that Pfizer Pharmaceuticals and some of the pharmaceuticals are shipping out to the world uh, and to different places all over the country. Uh, that doesn't mean this uh, pandemic's going to end or it's going to be you know, wiped out completely right away. So, you know, I would just say this, uh, be safe, be smart, um, take your vitamins, get into the gym, work out, physical activity, emotional, physical, emotional, mental strength is huge. Uh, get eight hours of sleep every night. You know, there's things you can do. My wife had this thing for two weeks, about six weeks ago. And Thankfully, me and the boys never got it. It can happen to anybody. But I will tell you, the healthier habits you have, the more challenging it is for this thing to spread. So do what you can do individually uh, and help, uh, help those around you. So happy Tuesday. Thanks for hopping on. We'll be back next week. Good to see everybody. And uh, thanks for listening. See you guys.